Hey guys, so today I'm going to be introducing you to a new type of video on this channel. It's going to be a distribution review of Manjaro Linux, but it's going to be done in a slightly different way. You see, I have finally bit the bullet and got rid of my Windows 8.1 partition. Uh, I usually really just kept it around for gaming, but considering that there are now 1500 games available for Linux, many of them that are really, really good, and considering that, well, quite frankly, some of the most exciting games to come out um, at the moment are on the indie scene, which is actually has a really good track record for developing on Linux based operating systems. I really was only booting into that Windows 8.1 partition once a month, if that, having to deal with literally hundreds of updates at a time, only to play a game which I kind of have found better games that are supported on Linux now. Um, I thought I might get rid of the partition and put maybe a second Linux distribution on. A second Linux distribution where I can sort of trial it as my primary Linux distribution, as like a a workstation, as, a, as an operating system that I'd use day in and day out, and then I'd have that second Linux Mint partition as my kind of fallback option. So, what is the first distribution that I've decided to sort of um, test in a more long-term and in-depth way? Well, I did explain at the beginning of the video, it's Manjaro Linux, of course. Now, Manjaro Linux has been getting a lot of support lately, a lot of, um, a lot of attention, because it is bridging a gap that we have been looking at bridging for quite some time. You see, uh, it is based on Arch Linux, and Arch Linux is known for being lightweight, having a great set of repositories, being a rolling distribution, but also being a distribution that is really more geared towards advanced Linux users. But there is this absolute wealth of um, resources available. So for a while, I feel that the Linux community has been looking for a Manjaro type distribution, which can take all the power of Arch Linux and all the work and talent that has gone into the Arch Linux distribution and make it a little bit more accessible to people that are a little bit newer to Linux or people that might be less enthusiastic about learning command line stuff and all that kind of stuff. So Manjaro does seem to be at this point in time, the best bet at making the power, the power that Arch Linux has available to your more sort of of, uh, regular user. So I've been trying it now for about somewhere between one and two weeks and I've got to say I am really 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 impressed with it. Uh, it is significantly more stable than I thought it'd be although I got to admit there have been bugs that have come up and I'll talk a little bit about how I'm going to deal or how I've dealt with them and how you know some of the tips that I've learned later on in this video. I've also noticed that it has fantastically cutting edge software not only from the Manjaro community repositories and the sort of the Manjaro ecosystem but also from the Arch repositories which we also have access access to. Um, and it is particularly easy to use. It did take me some uh, getting into the stride of it, particularly because I'm more used to Ubuntu or Debian based distributions that I had to relearn how to do a lot of things that I already already knew how to do. For example, updating the operating system. There's uh, some differences in the update process. In the, uh, in the entire sort of philosophy, Debian has a very set in stone kind of philosophy, which does filter through to uh, distributions that are based on top of it, like Ubuntu and like Linux Mint. And I think that that's fundamentally a good thing. And I think that Debian's um, very staunch philosophy is an incredibly strong and powerful cornerstone for the Linux community, which is also shared to to a, a very real degree also by the likes of Red Hat and, and Fedora and those kind of distributions uh, from a different Linux family, I guess. Okay, so as mentioned earlier, this review is going to be done in a significantly different style to the demonstration videos that are a little bit more common on this channel. So I'm going to be explaining my experiences as I learned to use the operating system as a production environment distribution as if it were my main operating system and sort of talk through some of the pros and cons. I'll start with the pros, I'll then move on to the things that weren't as good about the distribution as I'd hoped and then sort of sum up my, my feelings towards it. Okay, so first on the list of the pros, the thing that is probably most notable about the distribution is the amount of readily available cutting edge software. Uh, I found that there were significantly more up-to-date versions of software than there were on my Linux Mint partition and I found that many bugs had been fixed since the uh, latest long-term support release of Ubuntu. So I do feel that even though there's newer versions of just about every kind of software that you can imagine, um, it also, um, and, and with that br brings various bugs as you get with cutting edge software, it also seemed that a lot of bugs were fixed significantly quicker than on sort of scheduled releases and long-term support releases. So there was that. Um, and there was a lot of it. I mean, there has is the 
the number of packages available in the uh, package manager in the in the distribution ecosystem well put it this way whereas i'd usually rely on third party support on ubuntu distribution so third party ppas and uh, you know the dot dev files that you download and then sort of extract as installers yeah there was none of that with uh with manjaro there was i was bringing packages from the manjaro repositories for 99 percent of the amount of packages that i needed the amount of software that i needed could have been found in the manjaro uh, software um, center i guess you'd call it but also when there was the one or two pieces of software i think open broadcast software Software I needed to get from the Arch repositories. Uh, I also needed to get InSync, which is what I use to sync up my Google Drives on Linux as well. A fantastic program. Again, available in the Arch repositories. It does give you fair warning when you are getting software from the Arch repositories that it's not as well supported. That being said, though, I found zero problems with Open Broadcaster software and zero problems with InSync from getting them from the Arch repositories. So it does seem like you've got that backup option there, but that backup option seems pretty much as good as the the software that's um, supported by Manjaro just on a on a on a bugs kind of basis so whereas I did need to rely on third party support with Ubuntu distributions I didn't in Manjaro and I think that's really something that's quite noteworthy in fact um, I can do everything in Manjaro that I can do in my Linux Mint and Ubuntu installs but with more up-to-date software. And I can really see why Arch Linux and Manjaro really get this, uh, why they appeal to more enthusiastic uh, sort of Linux users, because you can get, you know, bleeding edge software in a reasonably stable environment. This was significantly more stable than I, than I was expecting. Um, it's a rolling release as well. That's another thing that you will, um, that you'll really start to appreciate over time. Now, I've only been using it for a couple of weeks, but the idea of a rolling release is that parts of the system are just replaced as time goes on without the need to actually switch out your entire operating system like Linux Mint tends to do every couple of years now with just sort of incremental updates in between. Now, I have appreciation for both of these ways of doing things. In regards to a work production machine, I'm probably still going to be more comfortable working with the slightly older versions of software but that have been tested a little bit more that aren't updated as regularly so there's less bug fixing involved. That being said though, if you are inclined for more up-to-date software, this is a distribution that you will probably appreciate or at least appreciate that part of it um so yes it can do everything that ubuntu does but with more up-to-date software I, I really feel that that's something to take away that's the thing that absolutely blew me back quite a lot when it came to manjaro linux is i was comparing it to ubuntu i was comparing it to linux mint because those are the distributions i'm sort of uh, most closely acquainted with but that being said it it matched nearly pound for pound it, it was um it, it, i was very very impressed with manjaro across the board uh, in regards to support they have a great wiki there was a problem with setting up my nvidia resolutions and my sort of dual monitor displays uh, it just involved a matter of reading through the wiki there was a fair amount of reading that needed to be done because uh, different files are in different folders or directories and the setup process was a little bit different but for all intents and purposes once i'd read through the wiki everything was as straightforward as, as you can expect i also appreciated that um, you could use your nvidia drivers on the live cd that was particularly important because i i'm running a 970 so i'm, I'm running a nvidia geforce uh, 970 which is a very up-to-date or I say a very up-to-date card it's quite an up-to-date card and it's nice to know that it's it's supported on Manjaro which and it was supported with zero problems as if it had been a, a couple of years old NVIDIA card so that's really um, sort of reassuring there that it was even though I had to learn how to set up my NVIDIA card the number of steps involved were probably about the same as it would have done to set it up on Ubuntu using their um, it used to be called GTK Jockey, but their additional drivers uh, program. It's 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 a little bit of an odd experience having to relearn how to do things that I feel that I already should know how to do. But um, and it's a little bit jarring that you're just doing things a slightly different way. It takes a little while to get used to, and I think dis that's part of the the process of distro hopping. That's part of the process of moving from one distribution to another, and probably only a fraction of the work involved if you compare it to a Windows user coming across to Linux. So it gave me a nice chance to sort of relearn how to learn how to use Linux, as it were. But that being said, the software and the support was there. It was just a matter of looking for it. Now, the IRC uh, channel as well, which do claim to offer support, I found to be incredibly helpful. The people there are very, very nice. But it was a little quiet on occasions. So I did check in a few times throughout the course of my... Uh, experience with Manjaro and I did find that this is still a growing community this is a this was always going to be um, 
I, I, I call it an issue, but it never really stopped me from doing anything. But this was always going to be something that we had to bear in mind, was that Manjaro is a reasonably new distribution. Its community is still growing. It's only been in the limelight, really, for like the last year, maybe. T or, yeah, really. And it is it is very much growing. It's growing at a very, very fast rate. Um, but that being said, it still was there. It still served the purpose it needed to. And it's in very encouraging to actually start looking forward to, to, to what might actually come out of this community. One of the things that I was particularly impressed with was how well Steam and my Steam games worked on Manjaro. There were pretty much zero problems with installing Steam, pretty much zero problems with installing the games, pretty much zero problems with running the games. I did run into the occasional sound bug, um, but that was reasonably easily fixed. Um, um, but other than that, even some of the games, in fact, on my Steam collection ran a little bit better than they did on my Linux Mint partition because the graphic drivers were more readily updated on Manjaro than they are in Mint. So, all in all, incredibly impressed with the gaming side of Manjaro as well. Um, they keep the graphics drivers incredibly updated um, and Steam works as it would do on Windows or um, Ubuntu or Linux Mint. So... Yeah, fantastic. Okay, so now I'm going to be talking about some of the challenges that I faced using Manjaro Linux as my main Linux operating system over the past couple of weeks. Now, this is a very short list. As you can probably already tell, I am very impressed with this Linux distribution, but it isn't without its costs, and I'm going to talk about them right now. So there are really only two that are worth mentioning. The first is the lack of third-party support. Now, as large as the Manjaro repositories are, and as even larger as the Arch repositories are, um, if they don't cover all of your software needs, you're going to have a significant problem in trying to find a third party that will actually support either Manjaro or Arch. Now, there are a few companies that do deliberately go out of their way to support Arch, but Manjaro, I feel, hasn't been around long enough and perhaps isn't big enough for it to warrant being supported by software on its own. Now, that being said, every single piece of software that I, I need was available, if not in the Manjaro repositories, in the Arch repositories, and it was a problem that I never faced. So this is a theoretical point against it, but it is worth bearing in mind that if you're using something particularly obscure, uh, or you need something particularly obscure that might be available on other Linux distributions, um, you might not necessarily find it in Arch. Like I say, I've yet to actually come across this situation considering that Arch appears to have the largest repositories of any of the Linux distributions, but it theoretically could happen. That being said though, considering it uses the latest version of Wine and considering how good Wine is these days, it might actually even be worth looking at whether or not uh, any given program has an, a Windows um, equivalent that you could actually just run through Wine if that's something that you wanted to try out. Um, and I actually did run a number of uh, games on Wine with pretty much the same success rate as I, I get from Linux Mint, which is better than it's ever been. And, and pretty much any game made before 2010 will run on Wine flawlessly. So um, again, uh, when I say that I'm dropping my old Windows partition, I'm really not dropping as much as I thought. I'm dropping about four games that I quite like to pick up and play once in a while, but ultimately it's a minor sacrifice, especially when I can use that hard disk for something a little more, I don't know, educational. Okay, so now onto the final point against it, and that is the stability of it. It's this is a bit more of a complicated point than I initially thought going into this testing process because yes, this is a rolling release and with it comes some bugs. Yes, you're probably going to need some kind of support from the Arch repositories which are unofficially supported or supported by the Arch community. Um, and I expected that to cause a number of problems. Now, I didn't have any problems with any of the software that came out of the Arch repository, but like I said, I was only using open broadcaster software, um, is it OBS Studio, I think it's called, and the in-sync Google Drive application. So they're two, um, well, actually, OBS is actually a significantly um, complicated and very advanced piece of software. So the fact that I got that running with pretty much zero um, errors and zero bugs and zero problems is, is, is a pretty monumental achievement if we're completely honest. Um, there were a few bugs that I did encounter. I enc uh, encountered a pretty nasty bug with the KDE file manager, um, but it was simply a matter of switching out that file manager for another one. And I feel that that's pretty much something that is worth pretty much getting used to when you're looking at something like a rolling distribution or looking at Manjaro, is that... Um, you know, a piece of software could get updated and there could be a regressive um, 
error that sort of raises its head. Uh, and it might just be worth switching to another piece of software using that whilst they actually uh, bug fix the problem that you uh, that you had. Okay, so it appears that developers at Manjaro have taken the incredibly honorable and apparently insurmountable task of trying to take the power of Arch Linux and make it more accessible to your more newbie Linux user. So how did they do here? Well, as someone that isn't used to Arch-based distributions, I did actually find it reasonably easy to jump in and go. That being said, though, I am quite familiar with KDE, having used uh, KDE4 quite extensively, especially during the days when it was one of the few de uh, desktop environments that had really good multi-monitor support. Now, with that in mind, it probably isn't as user-friendly as a distribution like Linux Mint. There are little things that uh, give it away. For example, that the software manager still refers to packages by their um, by their package name and doesn't really offer a particularly um, sort of useful description of each of the packages to newbies. But uh, that being said, these things tend to come with time. And the package manager itself is incredibly intuitive to people that have been using Linux for a certain amount of time now. I also find that occasionally certain languages used that wouldn't generally be understood by someone that's been using Windows for any length of time. Uh, I would possibly recommend this to people who are light Linux users but are used to using Linux, used to the way that Linux does things. Those kind of newbies are probably find Manjaro very easy to use. But I don't know if I'd recommend it from someone switching across from Windows. I feel that there's just too much that's different. The language is different. Uh, not only is the, like, the layout and the user experience different, but the way the packages are updated and installed is different. There's a lot more to learn, whereas something like Mint is significantly better at bridging the gap from Windows. Um, but that being said, it's a fantastic distribution, and I want to see it um, have a very long and very successful future because it is looking to me like it is a very very reputable competitor to your ubuntu's to your linux mints for people that want more up-to-date software that might not necessarily want to install a distribution every six months and people who are willing to uh, be a little bit more um, enthusiastic about learning some of the software that they're, they're using um, and are more keen to get perhaps the latest version so that they can get access to new features as they become available. Okay, so what are my final thoughts on Manjaro Linux? Well, I am incredibly impressed and I was going into this testing process knowing that Manjaro was a pretty good distribution off the bat. I feel that this can really be a serious contender to Ubuntu, maybe more for people that are interested in in sort of cutting edge software and a little bit more enthusiastic about their software choices, people that want to unlock new features as they become available. But if you are in any way excited about Linux and the software that Linux throws up and you are willing to sort of roll up your sleeves and fix the occasional bug, this distribution really is for you. Uh, I find that everything works just as well on Ubuntu sometimes requiring the occasional tweak here and there but in all reality you kind of have to do the same thing on Ubuntu and the Ubuntu family distributions as well. Now it being a rolling release does mean that there is more to download more regularly so I think that the speed of your internet connection should factor into your decision as to whether or not you use Manjaro as a main distribution. I have an incredibly fast internet connection so downloading the updates only took a couple of minutes for me. It could take a couple of hours for some other people and that's again worth bearing in mind. It's great for games, great for multimedia stuff. Um, one of the reasons I use Mint over Ubuntu is because Mint has significantly better support for the AVC HD codec, which is the codec that this camera uses. Uh, Manjaro actually uses a significantly better codec than Ubuntu as well, so I actually managed to find doing my video editing work on Manjaro was just as easily easy as it was on Mint. Unfortunately, Ubuntu just doesn't uh, doesn't hold a candle to those two distributions, which is interesting enough. So I would absolutely recommend this distribution if you kind of feel that you fit the profile for their user base, if you feel that you like cutting edge software uh, that's reasonably accessible, but then on occasion don't mind rolling up your sleeves to fix it, I certainly recommend this distribution. Truth be told, um, I'm probably going to now use a different Linux distribution on this partition and I'm kind of sad to see Manjaro go. I haven't decided what distribution I'm going to be testing next in a more in-depth way. If you have any suggestions, please feel free to leave them down in the comments section below, but I can't make any promises that I'll take requests on this because this is something that I've got to effectively live with for a couple of weeks, so it is uh, a significantly personal decision. That being said though, this last couple of weeks could have could have been a lot worse than than it has been and i've really just enjoyed using manjaro and 
it's uh, it's great to know that there are some great Ubuntu alternatives out there. Please let me know what you think down in the comments section below. And that's about it for me today. Until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.